Thank you so much for checking out Learn Linux TV, your source for Linux related fun and learning. I just love making this content for you guys, but making such content isn't cheap. If you enjoy my content, please consider supporting me by becoming a patron. As a patron, you'll enjoy ad free versions of every video that I upload, and also, at specific tiers, you'll also enjoy early access to select videos before the rest of the world. But even if you're not able to support me by becoming a patron, no problem, there's other ways to help. You can simply click the like button on the videos that you enjoy that would help out. In addition to that, word of mouth helps as well. So if you're enjoying my content, please help spread the learning by telling your friends and coworkers about the channel. If you're looking for something to read, well, you're in luck, I write books. And you can check out my latest books at learnlinux.tv slash books. Are you looking for help for your Linux server related projects? Or are you a business that has a Linux related project that you're working on and you need another set of hands? Well, you're in luck. Go to learnlinux.tv slash request hyphen assistance. There you can check out my schedule and consider hiring me to help you out. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to my Proxmox course. In today's class, it's all about the command line. I've been really looking forward to this because, well, I love the command line. Now, there's actually a ton of different commands within Proxmox, and there's no way that I could show you guys all of them. But what I'm going to do in this episode right here is I'm going to teach you guys my favorites, as well as the most common commands that you're going to need to manage your Proxmox servers via the command line. So let's dive right in. Okay, so here I am on my laptop. I have the Proxmox console right in front of me. It's time to get started with the command line. So what I'm going to do is go over to my terminal because I prefer to use SSH for these commands. If nothing else, it's easier to see in the recording because the font size is larger in my terminal than it is in my browser. So what I'm going to do is use SSH, and then I'll SSH as root. The IP address of my Proxmox server is 172.16.249.4. And now we're in. So there's two sets of commands that I'm going to give you guys. The first set is going to pertain to virtual machines, and then the next set is going to pertain to containers. So in terms of virtual machines, we have the QM command, and the Q in the QM command stands for QEMU, and the M stands for manager. So this command is the QEMU manager. This is the command that we will use to manage virtual machines. And the command syntax is fairly easy. Now you can also view the man page for QM, and what that's going to do is give you a full list of all the options that you have available. But again, I'm going over the most common in this video, so I'm not going to make you read all of this. Just keep in mind that if you want to extend your knowledge even further, you could check the man page. So the first command that I'm going to start you guys off with is QM and then list. And as you can see here, it's a fairly simple command. It's listing all the virtual machines. And of course, you'll notice that none of my containers are showing up right here. That's to be expected because QM is for virtual machines. We'll get to containers shortly. Now with the QM command, there's all kinds of things that we can do. And one of the things that I wanna show you guys is how to start, stop, and restart a virtual machine. So up here, what I'm going to do is actually shut everything down. All right, so everything is shut down. And now what I'm going to do is show you how to start a virtual machine with the QM command. So the first thing you give the QM command is a keyword. We've already given it the list keyword before, and that's how we ended up with the VM list. So what I wanna do is start a virtual machine, and let's start virtual machine number 100. Now this is actually going to fail, but I'll press enter anyway. And right here it tells us why it fails, because that particular virtual machine is a template. And the reason why I brought that up is because we actually see the templates here in the list. The name doesn't really tell us whether or not it's a template. 
but if we try to start a virtual machine that's actually a template, it's not going to let us. Now I should probably refresh that list because it shows virtual machines 101 and 102 are running, and that's no longer true. As you can see, they're both stopped. So what I'm going to do is go up to the console, I'll click on Web Server 1, just to get it ready. And now what I'm going to do is type QM and then the keyword start. And the one I'll start is VMID 101. I'll press enter. We'll go up here really quick and we should see it start up. And there it is, it's starting up. So I'm going to do the same thing with the other virtual machine. And we can see that it's already started. I know that because this little green triangle appeared right here even before I clicked on the console. And that one's booting up. And now it's ready. So as you can see already, the command line syntax is fairly easy and it's very useful. I can SSH into a server and manage virtual machines. But so far, you've only seen me start virtual machines. Let's look at some additional examples. So what I'm going to do is shut down one of them. I'll do QM and then shut down. And I'll shut down virtual machine 101, which is this one right here. And it's already down. That was pretty quick. Let's see if I can catch the other one a little quicker though. Nope, that one's already down as well. But anyway, you saw me shut down the virtual machines. That was pretty easy. All I had to do was type QM and then shut down and then the ID number of the virtual machine. Just go ahead and get these both started up. Let's go up here and we can see the VMs are starting. So, as you could probably guess, you can reboot a VM as well. And I think that's fairly self-explanatory, so I'll enter that command right there. And already, we see that Virtual Machine 101 is rebooting, just like we would expect. So, as a quick recap, I showed you how to start, stop, and reboot Virtual Machines. Another thing that I want to show you guys is how to handle misbehaving virtual machines. And this actually happens every now and then where you might have a virtual machine that runs into a problem and it's not able to shut down gracefully. Now the next two commands I'm going to give you are potentially destructive, so you would never want to use these commands unless you had no other option. Again, sometimes, every now and then, it's rare, but if a virtual machine runs into a problem, then through the web console, you'll most likely not be able to shut it down or reboot it, so the VM will be kind of like stuck. So the next command is QM and then reset, and then you give it the virtual machine ID. Unlike reboot, reset is abrupt. It's pretty much the equivalent of holding down the power button and then immediately pressing the power button, because it's definitely not a graceful reset. If you want graceful, go with reboot. Anyway, I'll press enter, and you can see that it immediately reset the VM and it's coming back up. And similar to that, we actually have QM and then stop, which will do the exact same thing, except it's not going to start the VM after it stops it. If this was a real server, it's essentially the same thing as just yanking the power cable. So that's why you definitely don't want to use this unless you absolutely have to. But you know, perhaps you'll run into a situation someday where you might need to do this. I certainly hope not, but technology is what it is. Sometimes it misbehaves and we have to do something that we would really rather not do. So with this VM off, let's go ahead and look at the options tab right here. We can see that start at boot is set to yes. Now what I could do if I wanted to disable this is I could click edit, then uncheck the box, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to show you how to do right now is configure options with the QM command. Notice right now, it still says yes for start at boot. So what I'm going to do is run QM, and I'm going to type set. That's the keyword for setting an option. We type set, and then we type dash dash, along with the name of the option that we want to change. And the option I'm going to change is called on boot. I'm going to set that equal to zero. 
And the virtual machine that I want to execute this against is VMID 101. It looks like it did indeed update that virtual machine. And start at boot is now set to no. And to reverse that, as you could probably guess, we just simply change the zero back to a one. And what I've noticed is that this doesn't always refresh right away. You can see that it just changed to yes. So sometimes there's a few second delay here, but I guess it doesn't really matter. If nothing else, you know how to set the on boot status for a virtual machine. And you can do that with or without the web console because now you know the command to do that. In addition to that, there's other configuration options that we can set when it comes to the QM set command. But before we do that, I probably should have shown you this earlier in the video. But an important command to remember is QM and then config and then the ID. I'll use 101 as an example yet again. And that's going to spit out a bunch of information about that virtual machine. So right here, you actually see the options that you can set. Right here, we have the on boot option. That's what we were playing around with earlier. It's currently set to one. So if you want to get a list of all the settings, you can easily get that from QM config. And if you are looking for a specific thing, then you can grep for that specific thing. So for example, I can grep for cores. If I want to limit the output to just how many cores there are with the virtual CPU, that'll give you the answer. Same with memory and so on. In fact, let's go ahead and change the memory. So again, to change a setting is QM and then set. We want to set something. And specifically, I want to set the memory. It's currently set to 1024 or essentially one gigabyte. I want to set it to 2048. I'm just going to double it. And what I want to do is run that against virtual machine number 101. And if I go ahead and grep again for memory, Previously, it was set to 1024, and now it's set to 2048. Now, of course, there's a lot of other options that we can set with a QM set command, but I think that's enough for now. Those are some of the most important ones anyway. But again, if you want to grow your knowledge even further, you can check the man page, as well as the Proxmox documentation. I would love to go over every single variation of the QM command, but that would be a very long video. And I definitely want to show you guys container commands so let's go ahead and do that right now. Now, when it comes to containers, we have the PCT command, and that stands for Proxmox Container Toolkit. Just like with QM list, I could do PCT list. You're going to see quite a few similarities with the syntax. Anyway, I'll press enter. And we have these three containers right here, one of which is actually a template, so we can't actually use it, but it's still in the list. And that's similar to the QM list command. That command also showed the template in the list as well, just keep in mind when you run this command, you will see containers as well as templates. Similar to the QM config command, we could type PCT config and give it an ID number. I'll just go with 104. I'll press enter. And it, of course, gives you the configuration options for that particular container. We see the memory. We see an on boot option. So it's fairly similar when it comes to looking at the options for virtual machines but there's going to be some variations because we're dealing with containers now rather than virtual machines. So next, what I'm going to do is show you how to start, stop, and restart containers. Again, we have these containers right here, and they're all stopped. So you can run PCT start and then an ID number, and of course, this is not going to work. And that's because 103 is a template. I just wanted to show you that it's the same thing here with containers, just like it is with virtual machines. But anyway, let's go ahead and start up container number 104 and also 105. So you can see this one has started up and now this one has started up. So we were able to start both of these containers via the command line. We also have similar options for shut down and restart. So for example, we could do PCT and then shut down. And I'll run that against container 104. We also have PCT reboot. I'll run that against container number 105. So container 104 is not running and container 105 was rebooted. 
and it happened so quickly that I wasn't able to catch it, but I think you get the point. You can shut down a container as well as reboot a container with a command line. Let's go ahead and start up container 104. And there it is, now it's available. That's pretty cool. Now let me show you one of my favorite PCT commands actually, which is PCT enter. So if we execute PCT enter against a container ID, in this case I'll use ID number 104, what do you think is going to happen? I'll press enter and check that out. I actually get access to a shell running on the container when I run the PCT enter command, which is exactly what it does. It opens a shell on that container, and then you can run all of your commands right then and there. Of course, you can access the container via SSH or however you want to access it. But I think PCT enter is simple, it gets the job done, and I like it. I'll hold control and press D to disconnect. Now I'm back to my Proxmox server. Let's take a look at how to change the configuration of a container. But first of all, before we change configuration, we should see what the current configuration actually is. So that's PCT and then config, which I showed you guys earlier. Then the container number. On boot is currently set to zero. So that container will not start up automatically. Let's go ahead and fix that. So it's PCT and then set. We give it the container number, in my case, 104. And the option is on boot. And what's different about this is that the option has one hyphen in this case, but with the QM commands that we ran earlier, this would have two hyphens. But it doesn't matter, it's simple enough. Let's change that to a one. And now we can see that on boot is now set to one. So there you go, we were able to do it. So let's check out the config yet again for 104. And there it is. So right here for the memory, this is in megabytes by the way, we have 2048. So to change that, I personally think it's a little high. You can run PCT and then set, and then the container ID. In this case, I'm going to change memory. I'm going to set that to 1024. Now notice that it's 2048 right here. And now it's 1024. Again, it's out of scope to go over every single variation of these commands, but there's other commands out there. If you do need to use them, just check the documentation. But I think as far as this particular video is concerned, I've gone over all the basics. So that should be good enough for now. So there you go. Now you guys know how to use the command line in Proxmox, which is pretty cool. I hope you found that useful. And if you did find that useful, please click that like button because that'll let YouTube know that you want to see more tutorials like this one. In the next episode, we're going to get started into the world of networking. That's another one of my favorite topics, actually, so I can't wait to get that video uploaded and out to you guys if I haven't already done so, depending on when you're watching this. So please click that like button again and also make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.